The following interview is conducted with Lowell R. Barnes, DVM, for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, February the 4th, 2009, at his home. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome and good morning. Well, good morning to you. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents in your early years? Well, I was born in Jennings County, Indiana, and uh, uh, my father was Alan Leslie Barnes. He was a, a school teacher, and uh, we lived in um, Jennings County, Indiana, and uh, the county seat of Jennings County is uh, uh, North Vernon, uh, and uh, uh, so my early introduction to and uh, uh, our address was Comiskey, C-O-M-M-I-S-K-E-Y, Indiana, and uh, uh, my father died, and uh, uh, my mother was a widow, and uh, uh, she, uh, from my father's estate, uh, got together enough funds that she could send me to Ohio State University to study veterinary medicine. Well, how nice. Can you and uh, I studied veterinary medicine at Ohio State University and graduated in veterinary medicine and worked for the, uh, the government of the United States, the Department of Agriculture, uh, Bureau of Animal Industry, uh, uh, and retired four years later. Okay. Can, I, can you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, what high school did you go to? What was high school like for you? High school. Mm -hmm. I went to high school to Fortville, Indiana. Okay. And uh, uh, there I uh, completed four years in, in high school in Fortville, Indiana. And uh, then I, uh, my next move was to study veterinary medicine. And I went to the Ohio State University. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about when you were there? What was the classes in the classroom and your professors? Oh. And what was campus life? Well, uh, uh, campus life was great. It is, uh, uh, I went to uh, the university and uh, uh, went through freshman week, and uh, uh, it was a, a transition because uh, uh, I had lived in the country. Uh, I wasn't accustomed to wearing a shirt, uh, coat and tie, uh, I generally, uh, but I was a student, and uh, as a student, uh, I was on the honor roll uh, in the College of Veterinary Medicine. Dean Brumley was the then dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine at Ohio State University, and uh, I, uh, during that first two years, uh, uh, I was uh, given a, a letter from the dean uh, complimenting uh, to my to my mother who was uh, paying the uh, the fees to keep me in school. I did not have to pay an out of state fee because uh, uh, at that particular time veterinary students uh, were uh, permitted to uh, enroll in veterinary medicine. Uh, without paying an out-of-state fee. Very nice. Was your cl was the class very large? Uh, when the, the class uh, the class eventually was uh, uh, thirty-one members, but uh, when we started, there was uh, uh, around seventy-five in the in the School of Veterinary Medicine at that time at Ohio State University. Okay. Did you live on campus? Yes, uh, I lived. Uh, 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 I lived on uh, uh, on campus, as it is, uh, and uh, uh, I had uh, four roommates that we lived uh, on uh, Framby's Avenue in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, very nice. You mentioned about a shirt and tie. Did you have to wear a shirt and tie to class? No, oh. I did not, but okay. uh, 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 it was just that uh, certain 
No, no, not just a class, but uh, special events or smoking. They had uh, uh, they had freshman week. I and see. At freshman week, uh, uh, the students uh, became acquainted, and uh, among other things, uh, uh, the students in later years told me that they uh, they had uh, told us that uh, there would only be a portion of us that would go on and graduate, and a number of them had decided I wasn't going to be the one. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> then uh, within uh, uh, 10 days' time, they had a, uh, a question which was to describe the uh, scapula of the horse, that being uh, uh, a specific bone in the horse. And uh, the class went all around. The, this was in an anatomy. Anatomy is the study of uh, parts, bones, and muscles, and uh, the entire complex of, a, of an animal. And uh, um, so uh, when the question got to me, uh, I was the first one to answer it. Very and after that, students wanted to study with me. Very good, very good. <laughs> Did you have any brothers or sisters, Dr. Barnes? Or are you an only child? I was an only child, okay. yes. Okay. Now, then, F, uh, what year did um, did you graduate, and you got your DVM from Ohio State? I got my DVM from Ohio State in 1935. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about family. You're married. Did you meet your wife while you were in vet school? Yes, I did, and okay. she's maybe on the phone. I don't know whether she is or not, but uh, okay. she was um, uh, uh, a student at the university, and uh, I met her on the university, and uh, we dated and subsequently married. Very good. Do you have any children? Uh, yes. Uh, um, I have uh, two sons, uh, Alan and James, and I have uh, uh, three daughters, uh, Lois, uh, um, Helen, Lois, and Helen. I, I, I guess uh, those are the ones I remember right sure. now. Okay. Um, uh, after you got your uh, veterinary degree, then what came next? Did you, um, what was your career path? What did you do? And tell us well, a little bit about that. What I did about that was that uh, uh, I went to work as a full-time employee of the U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, Bureau of Animal Industry, okay. and I worked for them for several years. Where were they located? They were, uh, they, uh, uh, they were, I worked out of uh, an office in near Columbus, Ohio. Okay. What was the job market at that time, sir, when you graduated? Particularly, I mean, for veterinarians, was it pretty good? Because um, it was during the Depression, wasn't it? It was during the Depression, and uh, uh, that was uh, the reason that uh, I did that rather than uh, go into a private practice. Okay. And uh, uh, private practices... Uh, were good in those days, but they still were were difficult. So I went to work for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Okay, all right. And you said you were with them for a couple of years, and then what came next? Well, uh, for several years, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, I guess I can't really tell you, right? Okay. But then, I, I'm not, uh, I should be able to recall, but I'm not. That's okay. Did uh, you were, and then did you work in, you worked in Indiana? You, uh, I, uh, uh, let's see, I worked in, in Indiana and Ohio. Okay. And, uh, um, I, uh, became veterinarian in charge of animal health in Indiana in about 1940, something thereabouts. And I was responsible for the Department of Agriculture's uh, uh, 
programs on animal health in India. Uh, where, where were you based? Were you in Indianapolis? Uh, I was uh, based at. Uh, uh, I was based uh, uh, first in. Well, I don't remember. Oh, okay. I, I better not. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, better not give me in, in, in accurate information. That's, that's okay. You can always add that to the transcript. Um, what were some of the duties did, that you had that your job entailed for the researchers? Can you tell us a little bit about what you were doing. Oh, um, what I was doing was testing cattle for bovine tuberculosis. Okay. And at that time, the, program, the federal government had a program in which uh, uh, individuals uh, uh, could have their animals tested, and uh, if they were positive, uh, they were removed from the herd, and the government paid the, uh, an indemnity uh, for the value of the animal that was being removed from the herd. The reason for removing these animals from the herd was that they had a, uh, a health significance. That is, uh, uh, the disease was transmissible to people. And uh, so uh, uh, there was a, a program in effect at that time that was uh, somewhat the, the New Deal these days, that is, uh, and uh, there was a program in effect uh, to improve the 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 uh, possible to be, be, that uh, that would prevent uh, exposure of people to tuberculosis from animals. Okay. Did you did you go to uh, the farms or were the uh, the animals? Did they come to you for the testing? Well, the animals. Uh, um, they had certain certain times that uh, it was advantageous for the owner of a herd of animals to have it tested for tuberculosis. In fact, it was required that it be tested for tuberculosis. Okay. Okay. Um, then you then you stayed with the with these uh, as the federal employee all the all the years that you were there. Uh, were there other types of tests that you also were in charge of? Well, tests for brucellosis in animals. Okay. And uh, um, then uh, when I left them, uh, well, then I was transferred. I went to, uh, I was interviewed. Uh, for employment in an office in New Orleans, and uh, I was employed by that office, and uh, uh, then I was, uh, uh, my expenses was paid, and I was uh, employed and worked in Puerto Rico uh, for several years. Okay. okay. And, and in Puerto Rico, that is, uh, there was, <laughs> even more concerned about uh, uh, the health aspects as far as the people who lived in uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, uh, there was a, uh, a federal program on which they paid uh, uh, indemnity for the removal of the tuberculous animals from herds. And right at that time, at the present, at that time, there was no, uh, uh, the, the animals were just removed and slaughtered and buried. And then as time came along, that is, uh, Puerto Rico developed a, a tuberculosis uh, uh, inspection programs, uh, and they had meat inspection, and they were, uh, the animals that were condemned uh, were identified by a brand on the on the jaw that said T, so that uh, that animal was permanently identified as being uh, 
infected with tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then uh, the government paid an indemnity uh, to the owners for those animals. Okay, all right. And then after Puerto Rico, did you come back to uh, Indiana? Yes. Okay. And I came back to Pendleton, Indiana, and started working uh, uh, in different areas of the state of Indiana. Okay. Do you do? Do you have to do some? Where well, you were still doing testing, and you were still with the uh, USDA Department of Agriculture? Well, the children stayed with it. Uh, uh, we stayed together. That mm -hmm. is, and, uh, uh, my children and I. That is, and. Uh, uh, we lived in Pendleton, Indiana. My wife, uh, uh, in, uh, we had a rather uh, antiquated house, and uh, uh, we decided to employ an architect to build uh, the uh, home for us, and that's where we live today. Very nice. And But you were still, during that time before you retired, you were still with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, is that correct? I was with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh -huh, now, right. that's not uh, uh, Purdue University uh, is different from the U.S. Sure. Department of Agriculture. Right, understand. Okay, um, then uh, let's talk a little bit about um, one of, some of the awards, and I believe you received a Sagamore of the Wabash. Uh, yes, I have a, a uh, an award uh, that I was given. Uh, and I can read it to you if you uh, let me go to another phone. All right, you hold on, and then I'll put you back. All right, I'll 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 disconnect for a moment until you come back. Okay. Okay, you to hold on a minute, and I'll go get this award that I was given. I was given an award of being a Sagamore of the Wabash. Fine. I'll and, and I want to get that, and I want to read it to you so that I read it to you accurately. Correct, and I will just stop the recorder until you come back. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh... This award was given by Governor Orr, Robert D. Orr, Governor of the State of Indiana, and it was given the 16th day of May in 1984. And it's uh, how much you want to read or listen to this, I don't know. It is Just uh, know all men by these presents. Whereas the great state of Indiana derives in part from qualities possessed by noble chieftains of Indian tribes, which once, once roamed in our domain. Whereas it has been immortal and immor immemorable custom of the state of Indiana to attract to its support those that have exhibited such qualities and there has in, and there has endeared himself to the citizens of Indiana, below our barns, DVM, distinguished by the humanity of living, the loyalty and friendship, his wisdom in counsel, and inspiration of leadership. Now here thereafter recognizes his greatness and desiring to avail myself of his counsel, I do hereby appoint him a chieftain upon my staff with the rank of Sagamore of the Wabash. Witness my hand and seal the 16th day of May, 1984. Robert D. Orr, Governor of the State of Indiana. Very, very nice. Right. I think another award that you got, your special recognition from the United States Animal Health Association? Yes. And do you want to tell us a little bit about that one? I will just get it. It's from the United States Animal Health Association. It recognizes myself and my wife recognized Mary Helen and Lowell Barnes for their lifetime service and outstanding contributions in this nation's animal industries and the United States Animal Health Association. Given on November 6, 2005 in Hershey, Pennsylvania by the United States Animal Health Association. 
Very nice. Um, I may have written gone too fast for no, you. No, I, I think it's okay. Um, let me ask you this. Now that you're retired, what can you tell us what you're doing in retirement? And when did you retire? I retired in 1940. Okay. And uh, uh, I live in the home in the country. Okay. And uh, um, I... Uh, and in, in, in retirement, it is, uh, I am active in the Church of the, you know, the Church of the Brethren, uh -huh. uh, located uh, uh, here nearby, and I have been a member of the Church of the Brethren for a number of years. Uh, now, I don't know what else. Uh, well, that sounds good. Um, do you have a... Um would you like to, do you have an outstanding event in your life that you'd like to share with us? Anything that comes to mind? Anything special? Right now, I don't. Uh, okay, that's all right. Are there any, any uh, further comment, uh, any topics that you'd like to talk a little bit more about or anything in the closing that you'd like to say? Well, I would like to say that the thing that's uh, my, uh, my greatest accomplishment uh, has been was been in developing a method of tracing animals that are found to be tuberculous at slaughter and that are reported uh, uh, and are or, and traced back to their origin. By following such a program, we were able to reduce tuberculosis to the point that it's been several years, and you ask the state veterinarian how long it has been since they've had a case of bovine tuberculosis okay. in Indiana. Okay, all right, very good. Any any other comments or um, comments you'd care to make? Your summary? Um, Comes to mind? Sounds like you're keeping pretty busy, though, in retirement. Yeah. Now, um, of course, I spent several years in Puerto Rico, uh -huh. and I also spent several years in Jamaica. Oh, okay. Doing some testing down there? I was employed by, uh, uh, and I'm not going to give you my exact employer that is. I can, uh, if, you, if you really need it, I think I can oh. find it. No, that's okay. But you spent uh, several years doing, but doing some testing of the animals, animal testing? Well, it was uh, animal testing, uh, animal health. It is, uh, I was advisor to the uh, governor of the state of, uh, 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 the governor of, uh, of Jamaica. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, we had very interesting experiences with uh, uh, the state of Jamaica. And, uh, uh, Dr. Peter Bent was the uh, uh, the national uh, person that I cooperated with, uh, and uh, he is now retired. Uh, but he was the uh, uh, representatives for this country of Jamaica when I was working uh, in Jamaica. Very good. Well, that's very nice. Okay. Any any other things that you uh, comes to mind that you'd like to share before we end the interview? Um, right off, uh, uh, I don't. Uh, that that pretty much covers it. You think for the time yeah. being? Okay. Now, I uh, if you want to learn something about me, that is, you can call the state veterinarian. Or the state of Indiana. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I think you've covered uh, things that we're, we're interested in the, the, your involvement, and I think the interview certainly reflects that. And I, I want to thank you very much, Dr. Barnes. I've enjoyed chatting with you, and I appreciate the time that uh, you've given to the program. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>